And now some might consider it funny and some might not. And if you don't consider it funny, then go ask your mom. Maybe she thinks it's funny, but it's definitely something that makes you think twice about following what? Superstitions. So this is what our segment's gonna be about next. You ever heard those weird, crazy superstitions that have been around forever that our parents told us about when we were kids and for whatever reasons, they stuck and we still kind of believe them. Oh no, it's a boberia, but we still won't do number one. We're gonna start off with walking under ladders, right? It's one of those things where you're just like, oh, Get stupid, I'll walk under it. But if nobody's around, you know you're walking your butt around that ladder and you're not going underneath. So let's find out where that it actually is derived from. So in Christianity, the triangles used to represent the Holy Trinity, right? So the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. So it was believed that walking under the ladder was blasphemous. The superstition didn't end there. Later in the 1600s, criminals were made to walk underneath ladders on their way to the gallows. So it's like, Wow, like not only are we gonna hurt and kill you, but we want you to have bad luck on the other side too. Next, number two. Okay, this is something that is like close to my heart. Crossing paths with a black cat. So that is derived from European folklore claiming that a black cat crossing your path by moonlight often signified death by epidemic. Hmm, they didn't know about Corona, did they? Well, more than likely, a black cat was crossing your path because it was trying to get to its litter box. No other reason than that. All you have to do is look at a cat and look them in the, in the eye if they're crossing your path and in your best voice say, not today, Satan, not today. Look, I only have black pussy cats. Pussy cats. And they are the best. No bad luck there at all. Next, breaking a mirror. We've all heard about this. I've broken a couple mirrors while well, I was just waking up in the morning after a bad night of partying, but that's completely different. This myth started with the Romans. So they believed that the soul would regenerate about every seven years or so. So essentially, when you break a mirror, you're waiting for an entirely new soul to rid yourself of the bad luck. Other believed that mirrors were actually devices of the gods and breaking a mirror would anger the gods who would then torment the person whose last reflection it held. Either way, breaking a mirror is said to bring you heaps of bad luck unless you use one of those foolproof hacks, which is almost impossible. I don't know. I have friends that have probably done bad things on mirrors and broken them and nothing bad happened to them. But you see, it's a crock of crap, right? But you and me, we break a mirror and the first thing we're like, oh no. Next, spilling the salt. So just spilling the tea too. One widespread explanation of the belief that it is unlucky to spill salt is that Judas spilled the salt at the Last Supper. So just because Judas was clumsy, the rest of us started thinking that that was bad luck. Como va a ser? No entiendo. Pero if you spill the salt, then you throw it behind your back, right? Something like that. I did that once and my wife was sitting behind me. She got salt in her eye, it happens. Next, picking up a tails up penny. This is actually something true to my heart too and I'll tell you at the end of this explanation. So you find a penny, you pick it up and all day you will have good luck, right? So many ancient cultures believed that metals were precious gifts from the gods and that you would bring, that they would bring you good luck if you found them. So pennies are not worth much, but picking them up was also considered good luck because it increased your wealth, right? And I guess I, I get that, right? If you have $2 in your pocket and you saw a penny on the floor, now you have $2.01, so it did increase your wealth. So the bad luck from pennies comes from the understanding of a constant battle between good and evil. So if one thing is good and, or one side is good, then the other side must be bad, right? So if one side of the penny brings good luck, then the other side I guess needs to bring bad luck, you know? So for me, pennies, I, I, you know, I, I'm, I am that person, even during Corona, I would sanitize it first. But if I ever see a penny on the floor with the face up, I always pick it up because um, my godmother, who I miss so dearly, would always tell me about pennies from heaven. So I kind of feel like it's a kind of like her connection to me just saying like, hey, estoy contigo todavía. So I will pick up a nasty, grimy penny in the middle of Hialeah without a glove and put it in my pocket all nice and happy, and I'll have luck, good luck for the rest of the day. Pa' que lo sepa. All right, so we'll move on. Opening an umbrella inside, yeah? Mm-hmm, umbrella. Ella, Ella. God, I haven't heard that song in forever. You guys remember the Rihanna song? Yeah, well, the superstition might have stemmed from a belief that opening an umbrella indoors away from the sun's rays would anger the sun god Ra and generate negative consequences. Look, 
if I'm, uh, it's sometimes it's really hard to close those umbrellas, you know, and you need the help and the assistance of somebody. And unfortunately that person is inside the house. It happens, right? I mean, we live in South Florida where it rains like four months out of the year and we have umbrellas everywhere and they're broken and we still keep them. So sometimes they inside, they end up inside the house. Don't mean nothing. Next, you guys have all heard this. Seeing a bride before the wedding. A very common wedding superstition to this day is that the, the groom or the partner mustn't see the other, uh, the other partner um, before the wedding. And this emerged from a time when arranged marriages were commonplace and was practiced to ensure that the groom would go through with the marriage. So basically, they would not let them see the bride because the bride was ugly. And if the guy would see the groom, see the bride, then he would run away and then the, the marriage would not happen. So that is where that dumb superstition stems from. Pero te digo that the day of my wedding, I didn't see my wife. I was like, uh-uh, we don't need no kind of bad luck. Uh-uh. She thought I was crazy. She still does. Next, stepping on a grave. Yeah, like this is something that, again, I know it's superstition, but if whenever I go to pay respects or anything to a grave, I never, ever walk on another grave. There's no way. So according to superstition, stepping on or over a grave brings bad luck to the one who does it. A lot of the history of the superstition has to do with the fact that cemeteries are considered sacred ground and doing anything to interfere or disrupt there is a bad thing to do. And that right there makes sense, right? So there's a couple of superstitions that still to this day, you and I still sort of believe in, we still sort of don't do anything about it because it's like, oh yeah, why mess with it, right? How about if it does work? 